Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Accessible Games interview series. I'm your host, Aaron Spelker. Mobile Accessible Games is a group that's focused on all things about mobile accessible gaming. And through our interview series, we interview game developers as well as accessibility influencers about the state of accessible gaming. And this week, we have a return guest in James Center, a developer of several different accessible mobile games. He's got a new game coming out on October 10th called Pocket Reality. And we're going to spend this uh, session of interview talking to James about his new game. Uh, James, welcome back. It's great to be back. So James, I always, as you know, like to remind people or, or introduce people to the people that are being interviewed. So why don't we tell people a little bit about yourself and you know some of the other games that you've created that are accessible for the blind and visually impaired community? Yeah, so I have been developing iOS games for seven years now as a hobby. Um, I do computer science work as my day job. Um, my first game was Nano Empire, which I developed as an independent study in college. Um, this is a text adventure about creating your own world in an age of nano robots. Um, it also has incremental resource management. Uh, then I made A Few Minutes of Glory, which is a real-time strategy game inspired by Age of Empires, but also trying to make it as minimalist as possible. This one is also text-based. Uh, then Evelyn's Farm, which is a paranormal adventure, kind of having Stephen King or Stranger Things vibes, where initially you're working on a spooky farm. And then finally, Guess the Rule, which is a logic puzzle game about finding patterns and sequences of shapes. Now, all of those games that James just mentioned have been uh, played and reviewed at the Mobile Accessible Game. So if you go to our uh, list of all of our game reviews, you should be able to find each one of those and uh, a review about the game. Uh, a Few Minutes of Glory that James mentioned, which is a real-time strategy type of game, actually made it on the list of pocketgamer.com's 10 most inf influential accessible mobile games that have come out in the past 10 years. So uh, congratulations on that honor, uh, James, of creating a real-time strategy game that was uh, accessible. And, and to what you mentioned, it's kind of the compact nature of that game that makes it accessible for a blind person to play a real-time strategy game um, you know, within the time constraints that real-time strategy games, you know, usually inflict on people. So the fact that it was such a tight, compact design allowed, you know, a blind person to navigate that within the framework of, of you know, real-time action. So, um, you know, again, the, congratulations on, you know, that dis distinction that you got with pocketgamer.com. I am so excited to be on that list. Thank you. But, you know, we're here to talk about a new game that you have coming out called Pocket Reality. Um, so why don't you tell us, you know, a little bit about that game and, and you know, where the idea of that game came from? Okay, so Pocket Reality creates a new alternate reality for you every day. And it's supposed to be something bizarre and unpredictable. Like maybe you're on a giant balloon and it's being invaded by sharks and you're also trying to solve the murder of a distinguished candle. So it puts everyday objects in unusual situations. Um, it's a randomly generated story and it creates a new one every day. And then through that, you know, I've gotten a chance to, to preview a little bit. I mean, through that, um, you're in this world, you are deciding, you know, who you're going to help, who you're going to betray, what you're going to research, what you're going to, you know, develop and, and, and try to, um, you know, build out relationships and, and through activities, increase your own metrics that, uh, that uh, help you, you know, solve missions, you know, the next day and the day after that, um, right? Yes. Yeah, so the core of the game is making these skill tests, um, strength, knowledge, influence. It's kind of classic RPG stuff, but uh, sorry about the sirens. Um, every... Every time you fail a skill test, your skill is going to increase. So it's kind of a natural way to make you get stronger through experience. And eventually, well, you have you start the day with 10 stamina, 
eventually you're going to run out of stamina because every time you fail, you lose one. And so you won't last forever, but you'll be stronger when you start a new world the next day. And the point, it seems like, you know, each day that you start a new world, you're a little bit stronger, you have a little bit higher skills in all the different categories that, you know, I might have not lasted very long the first day, but the second day I last a little bit longer and the third day I last a little bit longer um, as you kind of build up your, your various uh, values in each of those skill sets. Right. Uh, and the further you go each day, the more difficult the skill tests become. But the idea is you'll be able to progress further and explore more things in the world as you play longer. So, you know, as you mentioned, it's kind of a, a randomly generated world with some randomly generated scenarios uh, within the that world that you've created. I mean, how many, you know, worlds are probably infinite, but like scenarios that you create, I mean, how many different scenarios? Are there hundreds of different scenarios uh, that, you know, some of the protagonists might be different, but, you know, the, the underlying um, choice is, is similar. Are there hundreds of those different scenarios? So currently there are 20 scenarios. Each scenario gives you a broad topic to work with, like pirates or murder mystery or um, building a giant colossus. Um, yeah, but as you said, each scenario offers a lot of variation, especially because it connects to other scenarios. Like maybe the pirate captain is going to be a suspect in your murder mystery. Um, this was one of the biggest design challenges, how to make the scenarios interact so that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Because it would get pretty old if I just wrote some handcrafted content and then the same content appeared day after day without variation, even if it appears randomly. Hmm. And it, you said there's kind of 20 underlying scenarios is, is uh, you know, is it going to continue to expand, you know, to 25 and 30 and 35 over time, or is 20 kind of, uh, you know, the set that you're going? Uh, this definitely presents the opportunity for expansions. And I have some pretty clear plans for the first expansion, which will add 10 more scenarios. Also, this allows me to make the game free because I can release this core game of 20 scenarios for free, and then I can offer paid expansions in the future. So, you know, as someone who's just starting out the game, um, you know, so you have basically 24 hours to play around in a world. You know, how long do you actually, you know, on your first day, do you last 15 minutes or, or half an hour? How, you know, if you kind of just sit down and play it in one sitting, how long do you expect on your first day? How long are you going to really last? When I play it, it takes about 15 minutes. So not long at all. And then, you know, by your hundredth day, how long do you think you would last? Hmm. I guess it could be up to an hour. Um, I don't want the session length to become too long because then it just drags on and on. But mm -hmm. it certainly gives you the opportunity to last longer. I've tested it with, I just set my stats up to a thousand basically, and then I see how long I can last. Right. And it's it's longer. So is a thousand the max that you can get on any particular stat? Uh, no, you can keep going. That's just a high number that okay. I want to test with. Right, So, because basically what you're doing is every time you fail, you're gonna add a point to a stat. So you're, you're increasing your stats by 10 each day. Um, to start, and, and I don't know, does the stamina always stay at 10 or does that eventually increase um, over time as well? The stamina is always 10. Always 10. So every day, if you could play through an entire world, you're going to add 10 skill points to one of those four, uh, you know, knowledge and influence and strength. You know, you'll, you'll add 10 points into, you know, one or multiple of those uh, categories. Yes, you'll add at least 10 points, but there are various things you can do to add more. Right. Yeah, depending on uh, some of the scenarios that you run and choices that you make, right? Correct. 
Um, so, you know, where did you come up with this idea? What was the origin for creating this type of game? So it really comes from unifying two different ideas. That is how I, that is one of my favorite ways to come up with a game. Uh, the first idea was the surreal random adventure where you could just come come into a forest of pencils and and meet lions or something like that. You never know what you're going to find next. And I just wanted to play a game like that. I love surrealism. Like Mist is one of my founding game design inspirations. And I wanted to create something that's even more surreal than Mist. Like that classic painting where there's, there's a train coming out of a wall. Um, stuff like that. But then how do I actually create gameplay on top of it? Uh, the other idea is I enjoy games where there's something new to discover every day. There's always a feeling of anticipation. What is going to happen when I open this game today? Okay. Um, and so... Is there... Some, oh, go ahead, sorry. That somehow led to... Um, the combination of creating a surreal alternate reality for you that's different every day. I was gonna say when, you know, let, let's say I, you know, I play on Monday and then Tuesday and then Wednesday and I get busy on Thursday, I don't play. And then I play on Friday. Is there um, any advantage or disadvantages of playing multiple days in a row or, you know, disadvantage if you end up missing a day and don't play a world at all? Um, or is it just ready and waiting for you whenever you decide to pick it up? It's ready and waiting for you whenever you're, whenever you decide to pick it up. Um, if you wait a day, then you'll just get a brand new world and any other world that you may have been working on will be erased. Mm -hmm. So basically you've got 24 hours to play a given world before it resets. Uh, but there's no penalty for skipping a day. I don't want to, I don't want to compel people to keep their streaks going basically. And is there um, any end game to you know, Pocket Reality, or is it just a game that you play in perpetuity? Um, well, I added achievements. And so one possible definition of the end game is completing all the achievements. There are a bunch of secret outcomes that you can discover in each scenario, basically. Um, but beyond that, there's not really any end to the game. You can just keep playing as long as you want to find your own goals. I might add some secret end game content in the future. I haven't decided about it yet, but it's something I'm thinking about. And um, when you were creating this game and you know, kind of incorporating accessibility, was it was there any unique challenges to that, or did it go pretty smoothly having it be a fully accessible game? It's It's been pretty straightforward to make it accessible. Um, it is a very simple text-based game with just a text window and a few buttons. So Apple accessibility handles that pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, there are some bugs that I came up with. Um, I had to create kind of separate UI elements for the accessible version because it was not handling a situation that should be straightforward. It just is a thing that happens with complicated software sometimes. So. So, you know, to get a little more detail in the game, you know, let's let's kind of explain to people, you, you, you start out, you open up the game, you enter the world and it presents you with a scenario um, where you can decide to, you know, help or hinder or whatever the choice might be um, or explore something. Um, you can decide, you know, not to do it at all and really um, move on to a different scenario. So there's kind of uh, tabs at the bottom that might say, you know, one of three to start. And so you have kind of start with, let's say, three scenarios um, and you can do, you know, stuff on scenario one. And then when you're done doing stuff on scenario one and want to move on and look at scenario two, you go to scenario two and you might do some stuff on scenario two. And now that opens up. Um, not just three scenarios, but a fourth scenario shows up because you've taken some action and it's opened up, you know, another branch for you. So you kind of keep navigating through these tabs, making your various choices that, 
impact other parts of the story or open up uh, new branches. I mean, is that a, a good way of kind of explaining what happens as you enter the game? Yes. So basically each day takes the form of a collection of characters and locations. Um, you'll be exploring to unlock more and then traveling between them. And at any given time, each character or location will have some kind of request for you. Maybe they want to want you to give them a resource. I forgot to mention there is incremental resource collection over time in addition to these skill tests. Mm -hmm. Or their requests will involve making a skill test and risking your stamina. So you can't really do everything. You have to make choices about which requests you want to fulfill. That's how, that's how the open world aspects come in. It's a big world, but you can't do everything. You've got to decide what to focus on. And even making no choice is a choice because if you don't decide to help or hinder, still things can happen um, or, or, or results can happen even though you didn't intervene or make a decision. Yes, exactly. If, you, if somebody calls for help and you don't help them, there could be consequences. And so, you know, in, in creating this game, was that, you know, as you mentioned before, was it the interconnectedness of trying to, you know, have these different skill checks and stories, but then also have them impact other things, it, it, you know, in other parts of the world that have been created? Was it that interconnectedness that was the most difficult part of creating pocket reality? Or was there another component that caused challenge to creating this game? Yes, this was the most difficult part. And I solved it by basically having each scenario define a set of roles that must be played by the characters and locations from another scenario. So again, uh, uh, the murder mystery has sets up roles for three different suspects and you have to go get those suspects from other scenarios like the pirates or the love triangle scenarios. And then there could also be a war between various factions. Um, the factions then spill out into other scenarios. Um, yeah, so this was quite challenging. It, it draws from the idea of narrative Legos, which floats around in game developer circles. And it's kind of creating various elements that snap together and so that the whole is building something that's greater than just the parts. Well, you know, so that again, uh, reminding people the name of the game is Pocket Reality. It comes out on Monday, October 10th. Uh, there is a pre order link. So in the description of this uh, interview, I will put a link to the game so that you can pre-order it if you so choose. Uh, so it's ready for you on uh, Monday, October 10th. Um, you know, James, you know, any other information that people should know about the game that's coming out uh, about Pocket Reality and it, its release date of October 10th that you really want to share and, and make sure people are, are aware of? Um, just keep an eye out for that expansion. It should be a few months um please yeah i'm kind of experimenting with this free to play um structure uh, i'm taking your advice because last time you mentioned more of the um voiceover accessible community likes to try a game before they buy it so oh definitely yeah I i'm gonna try it this time please tell yeah. me if you like that decision um of course, I'm always listening for feedback to make it more convenient for from an accessibility perspective. I've I've been beta testing on Pocket Reality on um, AudioGames.net, so that solves a lot of the problems. But if anything comes up, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Um, and again, I'll share uh, James's all of his social media accounts again in the description of this uh, interview. You should see all of James. Uh, various social media, which uh, are ways that you can reach out to him. Right. Well, James, you know, thank you very much. Uh, you know, I'd love to have you back and uh, you know, hear how it went after you've done your release. And obviously, if you put out an expansion, uh, free, free, 
feel free to let me know and I'll share it with the community. But uh, again, I've loved all the uh, other games that you have put out. So we're, we're excited to see uh, how Pocket Reality is received. All right. Thank you so much for having me back. Thank you.